Hello everyone, my name is Junkers Hiryu, and in this video today, I have uh, spoken many times in my stream about something how I wanted to kind of actually walk you guys through certain tanks, uh, through the abilities of said tanks, uh, map positionings, and things like that. And I think today is the day that we're going to speak about a certain tank, one of my favorites currently. Um, it isn't everyone else's favorite, but we're going to get right into this, so let's, let's see what tank it is. How's everyone doing today? You guys are all right. I seem to be catching some sort of sniffle, and that's kind of annoying, but not much I really can do about it. This game wants to load on in. Ah, and there it is. Okay, so you can already see that I've been playing it a little bit, but uh. This is the M48A1. Um, in this game, uh, it doesn't really have the best reputation, I guess you could say. It is a pretty big tank. Um, and coming from its predecessor, which would be the M46. Uh, and don't look at it right now, because it's kind of actually broken. Um, from when from when it was HD, there's no way in the world it looks like that. But uh, <laughs> just just know for a fact that the M48 is all around kind of a better tank than the M46, but tier for tier it is not. Um, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But while we're here, let's go ahead and look at the M46 real quick and see what you're getting over the. Uh, um, uh, sorry, the M48 and what you're getting with the, uh, the M46. The M46 is a tier 9 vehicle, has 1700 hit points, weighs eh, 43 tons. Its horsepower per ton, I believe, is it like, it's only yeah, close to 20, so it's 18.89. Uh, top speed is 48, tw is 20 in reverse. Uh, its average damage per minute, which honestly makes no difference um is 2600 so your alpha shot from your 105 gun is around 390 um the lowest you can expect to see is 293 that number is kind of infamous because uh, a lot of times especially um a lot of players well especially me during my stream you'll always hear me say 293 because you know 293 is the lowest roll you can get on your 390 gun uh your 390 alpha gun so uh i expect to hear that a lot um but at, at any rate uh, the reload time in this thing, it says 9 seconds, I believe I've seen it somewhere around 7.5, uh, STB-like is what this tank is like. Um, its dispersion is 0.3.9, I think that's actually been buffed just recently, I think it was 4.0 before, so um, that's getting a little better. The aim time is 2 seconds, um, average pin on both the AP and APCR respectively, 218 and 265. That's very solid for a tier 9 tank. It can deal with all tier 10s as long as it's able to use mobility and flank them. Um, the elevation, uh, it's, it's minus 10. Minus 10. So, uh, the, uh, sorry, elevation is plus 22. Depression is minus 10. And that's pretty big. Um, tanks that I play on regular occasion usually tend to have some sort of a mobility and uh two depression i can't i can't really play tanks that don't have both of these i can do i can do one or the other um sometimes but nine times out of ten you're really going to want a tank that has both um it's, 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 fighting from defilade is useful and being able to actually get to the defilade to fight from it is uh, even better so uh, a lot of times you'll find yourself in a position where you can't really get to those positions because maybe you're playing in like an E100. Well, I mean, obviously, the E100s only really have gun depression, or it has some, but not a whole lot. But you're not really going to be fighting from Deflate in the E100 because it's so huge. Um, a lot of tanks that have small silhouettes will be able to take advantage of, um, of hills, rocks, wreckage, buildings, things and such like that, and sometimes on top of hills and shoot over and down into... Uh, uh, enemy formation, so it's kind of you know something that you really would, we would, would, would want to consider because, say for example, if you look at three tier nine tanks, there's the Patton, the E50, and the T54. T54 has mobility covered. It doesn't really have depression though. Um, I think minus five is what it's sitting at. That's not bad. That's not bad, but it's not very good <laughs> um, when it comes to having to fight on you know maps like uh, mines, for example, or on. Um, 
mountain pass or anything that you know that, that, that relies upon you having to use a hill or any sort of cover um otherwise it's great um it's turrets you know phenomenal and all that stuff so i mean it's it's you have these different tanks that can do different things and then we lead to the e50 the e50 is you know, obviously very good at ramming things um that's what everyone uses it for though i sometimes think that it's kind of just a waste of hit points unless you actually get rid of a tank by ramming it um uh, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but it also has a very, 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 very good gun. Um, now, I know the E50M, I believe, has six in the front, eight to the sides. Um, I'm not sure about the rear. I forget about the rear. But that is, you know, something that the patent doesn't have to deal with. It just has ten all the way around, for the, for, for the most part. And that's good. That's really, really good. You'll you'll notice how that 10, uh, how minus 10 comes into a huge play when you're just trying to actually, you know, just enjoy the tank. When you're not fighting a hill to get a shot off, when you're trying to snapshot someone, or when you're just trying to actually work an, an area. You'll it, it comes into its own when you're able to do things like that. You set the tempo to the battle, and you're allowed to actually at your rate of fire, engage enemies as they come to you. And that's huge. That's absolutely huge. And you'll be like, well, Junkers, I can do the same thing, you know, um, if I just, you know, play the T-54 in the same way. Well, you may have to expose a little bit too much more, uh, a little more than of your actual tank. And when you're doing stuff like that, like that, it gets like a JPE. Sometimes you have house, you know, house size holes blown inside you. And that's not something you really can deal with uh, unless you have proper gun depression and you're very fast. Um... So I mean the M the M forty the M forty six is an amazing tank for what it's worth, um, and to move to the M forty eight and this is what people do not like to move to the M forty eight afterwards feels like a downgrade, and uh, you know, you know I I can't really I can't really say that it is because I enjoy both tanks. I think the M forty eight is an amazing tank, um, but. For what it's worth, the M48 was kind of like one of our first version MBTs. So, I mean, it's kind of big. Uh, it, it, settled, it follows a role where it's supposed to be able to do a little bit of everything. Um, and it's not just a specific medium tank. Or it's not just a flanking type tank. It's supposed to be one that is meant to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with everything. You know, T-54 at the time was its main... With its main uh, its main competitor, obviously, because the Cold War-ish type things. I think the M48 also saw the little action in, uh... Was it... Was it Vietnam? No, the Persian was a lot in Vietnam. I'm not sure if it was Vietnam or Korea, but, um... Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm one of those. Um... I know the... I know the... West Germans? I the West Germans actually use it for a little while. Uh... Beautiful tank. It's a beautiful tank. But... Let's get back to, uh, the actual game. Um... The M48 comparing it to... Um, the M46, and this is what always gets people here, uh, it gets 300 more hit points, um, it weighs a little bit more, but that doesn't really matter, uh, it's armor is the big thing here that makes it, you know, it's, well, what's supposed to make it so much more different than the M46, and you look at the M46, I didn't go over that earlier, I'm sorry, um, you look at the armor on the M46, and what you get here is 101, 101, uh, both to, to the front, the sides, and you don't get shot in the sides, let's put it that way. 101, 101 for the turret and the hull uh, on both of these tanks. And you see you get a significant upgrade here. If I'm allowed to switch to it. A significant upgrade on the M48. Uh, Turret-wise, especially. Um, 177 on the turret. And your mantlet is just about, you know, I won't say impregnable, but it, it's strong. It's strong. You will be bouncing lots and lots and lots of shots from many different high-powered guns, uh, like you know JPEs, Foshes, um, and the like. So I mean, don't think that you can't just sit there. The only problem is no one's going to shoot your mantlet. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so all that armor is kind of moot because honestly, the turret is so big, as you can see here from the, just looking at it. Uh, you're probably going to hit either get hit in your cupola, um, you're going to hit the side of the turret, and if you turn it off just a bit, most likely you're going to get, you know, shot from the side of the turret, and it doesn't have any armor there. Um, that's that's kind of big. So, I mean, knowing knowing that, uh, the armor value, especially in Tier 10 with how high-powered most of those guns are, it's kind of a moot point. And, I mean, I can understand why you, you think that way, but 
I would I also have to say the best armor in this game is just not getting hit. So if you remind yourself that you don't have any armor and stop getting hit, the M48 plays a lot better. Um, moving into that though, the view range, and I didn't speak about this on the M46, the view range is kind of what gives this thing its edge. Okay, four, 420 meters of view range is what this tank gets. And that's that's pretty big. That's pretty big. It's the highest number I believe Wargaming has given a tank in this game. And I, and I don't think it's, it's, it's related to just a pet. And I think another tank actually gets 420, and I'm not I'm not really sure which one it is. It, the Leo gets 410, I think. Yeah, Leo gets 410, Batjack gets 400, 30B gets 410. Oh, it might be the only one with 420. I think it is, actually. Four, no, okay, the M60 also gets it. And the, yeah, so basically everything else along the way gets 410. The M60 and the M48 are the only ones that get 420, I believe. So that's huge. That's pretty big. Um, 10 meters of view range is not going to you know make or break the tank, and it's not going to specifically, you know, let you spot things you wouldn't have seen otherwise in 10 more meters. But it allows you to engage things a little further away or light things from a little further away. But because you're going to have to, because this tank doesn't really have any camo as it is pretty darn big. If I compare the size to a T110, for example, it's actually bigger. So, I mean, weight-wise, obviously not because of all the armor the T110 has. But you can kind of see here that the size, the overall size of the tank is essentially bigger. Um, so your camo value is kind of non-existent. Don't really expect to use that too much. And that's actually what medium tanks use a lot. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the alpha is basically the same. Penetration goes up quite a big deal. One kicker though, another reason why people don't like the M48, is it's a grind tier 10. Um, it's a 90 mil you start off with if you did not research the 105 and the M46, and if you did not, you made a grave mistake. Please play the M46 until you actually get the 105. Do not buy the M48 until you actually do this one small thing. Please, please. Um, you don't want to start off in a tier 10 with a 90 mil. You're like, oh, you know, 173 pin is all right. It isn't. It's not. And uh, you will find out very quickly how badly you will do. You will be very frustrated. You'll be very upset. And at least in a patent, you can kind of excuse the fact that you're using a 90 mil. Um, I would say free experience it just to be ready for it. But if you can't do that, you don't want to spend any gold. Or you don't have the gold to spend. Grind it out on the M46 and don't ruin the um, don't ruin the actual gameplay experience of the M48 and make it feel like it's a bad tank. Um, if you, if you do start off with the Tier 9 105, you are simply prepared for what you'd have to do. Uh, 218 pin isn't awful. It's kind of the same thing as the, as the M46, especially because it's the same gun. But you'll, be able to, you'll, have to, you'll have to start learning how to play the M48 like the M46, and you don't get the mobility of the M46. So you're going to have, you're, you're going to kind of be in a bad way, but the, you know, the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the gun itself is not bad. Uh, but the tier 10 105 is what kind of makes this gun what it is. It fires a 268-pin APCR round as standard and gets a 330 heat shell uh, as its secondary. Um, it also gets HE as well, but no one fires HE, even though it always does damage. Um, I put my girl crew in this. And that uh, that kind of boosts up stats a little bit. I uh, you know BIA obviously. I put camo on this. I probably should have put repair, but this crew came from my T49 after I retired it, and I have not worked out all the kinks for it. Uh, we can talk about crew skills in just a moment though. Um, average damage per minute also makes absolutely no difference because I guarantee you there will be no point in this game where you will ever be able to sit and hold down the fire button and fire the tank for a minute. So your DPM makes no difference but it lets you know what you can actually expect to see i i your average damage per minute is probably gonna be somewhere around 1600 i mean you know you're, you're popping up moving shooting ducking dodging it's what you it's what you should be expecting to have to do in a medium tank and getting into position to get those shots so you're not really gonna be seeing your dpm the dpm is irrelevant don't look at that um reload time is roughly about the same if not a little bit better um than the m46 so i think sitting right now i'm like sitting at six six point eight two uh, as the raise the rate of fire, uh, and the actual gun reload, it says on the left, on the right hand side, is seven point one one, and that's 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 good. That's good. That's pretty good. Um, 
<clears throat> you do uh, you do get a much better uh, dispersion range with the M46. Uh, 3, 0.36 isn't awful. I, I believe the T110 is 0.35, which makes it better with a 120. Um, but you get a little bit more ability with the M48, so you're not you know suffering here with this tank. Um, it's very comfortable. It's very comfortable. Um, on the gun itself, aim times two seconds. Eh, you know that's not too bad. Run, run it with a vert stab, um, optics preferably, and a rammer. That is what I do. Um, I have switched it up currently on my M60, and because the tanks are essentially the same, I have taken off the vert stab, ran, ran with Vince, optics, and a rammer to see if I can just max out my view range. Um, that is an experiment I'm doing, and I'm going to do it on the M60 because it's not really a tank I play too often, but, you know, it's worth a shot to see how it works. So I'll get back to you guys on that one. Back to the M48 again. Um, dispersion, yeah, 0.32, aim times, two seconds. That isn't too bad. It really isn't. If you're if you're smooth and you're you know deliberate in what you want to do, you won't really run into too many issues, and I think you'll be okay with that. Um, <sighs> going to the rest of it though, the elevation and depression. The depression you lose one degree. I'm guessing because of the size of the turret, um, and that's not that bad. It's not that bad. I mean, nine is still good enough for what it is. Uh, Ten, everything else though, you know, the, the, the traverse, the traverse speed, uh, the turret traverse, everything is you know solid for what it's worth on the M48. So honestly, you're 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 sitting pretty. You're sitting pretty. Um, the crew has you lose you lose one crew member, so be prepared for that. You're gonna lose your radio man. He goes to a standard uh, NATO layout, which is basically commander, gunner, loader. Sorry, no. Driver and loader, sorry, um, and that's what you'll expect to see in most of the tier tens you have. You know, sans the bat chat, and yeah, sans the bat chat. I think everyone else actually has four crew skills, or, or four, four four crew, um, and that's about it. So um, that's the quick rundown of the M48. I'm, I'm going to drop you guys into a replay that I did not too long ago. Uh, I believe I sat around in that game. It was on Himmelsdorf. First game back in the M48 in a while, and I was playing with one of my subs. His name is Drazen. Uh, going through basically just platoon, ma platoon maneuvers and uh, overall, what do I do? Uh, in most situations, how do I engage this or how do I engage that? When do I know when to switch to uh, a heat round or when can I, you know, when can I deal with you know, APCR? Which tank do I shoot first? Who do I not kill? It, you know, a little bit of everything. Just walking through that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll we'll drop that replay in right now and let me get to that for you guys. And I will walk you guys through this real fast. I hope you guys like. Uh, hope you guys like these videos because I, I, I this is kind of what I want to do for every single tank in the game. So, I started off with the M48 because I kind of like it, and I haven't played it in a while. So I figured that uh, you get a better, you can kind of get you know this is more like a uh, a test, a test to see if you guys kind of like this style of um, this style of videos from me. Okay, so we're sitting here right now, and I'm going to pause it as soon as the counter starts. Whenever it decides to start, bam, there it is. Okay, and one thing I like to do in my replays, when I'm doing replay reviews specifically, is I like to pause it in the beginning and look at all of the tanks in the match. Okay, so looking here, we don't have a single top tier heavy tank. That's not good, especially on Himmelsdorf. We know most of the fights can take place on the eight line. Um, on the eight line and on the uh, and on the one two, not having a heavy tank there or at least you know a strong TD tier ten preferably to kind of actually block that and slow the pace of the battle a little bit, you would find yourself probably in a little bit of trouble um, depending on how much they stuff how much stuff they actually throw on the hill. Not to spoil it for you, but they send quite a bit up there. Um, <laughs> uh, just looking at everything we have, though, you would look at this team comp and you'd go, wow, we might be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, but, you know, they aren't heavily stacked either, though. Like, the matchmaker was actually kind of favorable to both of us. And, you know, we got two Leos, two M48s, uh, a Bat Arty, and that is it for our 10s. They get an E5, an E50M, a Leo 1, and a Bat Arty. Uh, so we actually have one more tier 10 than them. Uh, a tank of mobility. Uh, or tank, you know, that's actually uh, counts on the battlefield. Um... So looking at that, you know, 5041, 295, Tortoise, Waffle 4, that's 
rounds out basically our alpha guns, uh, everything from there going into uh, the rest of the stuff, tier 8 and then the like. Not necessarily fodder tanks, but are they're, they're now classified as support tanks. They should be grabbing the hip of a tier 9 or a, a tier 10 and hanging with those tanks to support their rate of fire or to stop other tanks from shooting them. Uh, and then looking at their well, what they have basically, Yay Tiger, Fosh, E75, ISH, so they get a little more uh, meat than we do when it comes to holding positions and fighting and things like that. So, Let's see. Let's see what happens here. We're gonna skip ahead a little bit. Do, 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 do. All right. So I told Drazen here. I told him that basically we should probably go for the hill. Um, this is what I'm walking him through right now. I don't really see any reason why we want to go anywhere else. Uh, it's, it's kind of. It looks like. Uh, it looks like a lot of guys are gonna end up following me here. So we got a 54E1. Drazen's gonna follow me. An M46 is coming with me, and then this Leo one. Uh, Everyone else kind of goes up to the one two line and they're gonna do their own deal. So there's the E5 on the eight line. That's good because I don't want him on the hill. Having to fight him would probably just be a pain. So here we go. Rolling up here. The first thing I tend to always do is specifically on this map. If if you have enough tanks coming up with you, holding where the Leo one is isn't a bad idea because if they overwhelm you on this corner. You can now actually just back back straight up, get safe, and run. Because wasting your tank would be a bad idea here if you're overmatched. Because that means you can then take your mobility, go around, you know, jump back down through your cap circle, maybe hit the 1-2 line, or insert yourself on the 4-5. Anywhere else you need to be, but there. Because you're going to die. Um, but I called Drazen here, you know, because I have a platoon mate. I said, you know what? Let's get to this little mound here and see what tanks we can stop from getting up here. Because... The best damage is always free damage. Any damage you can do without taking any return or having any return fire or having anyone even look at you funny is the best kind of damage to have. And I preach this all the time because the first part of the engagement ruins another player's engagement. If you can show up and, you know, basically just damage him repeatedly, make him think otherwise, and in the same situation again, you've defeated that player mentally and you've now actually worked out by killing that one guy. You've now shown that the other people that are coming up with him or behind him or are already up, they are not safe. And that's that's kind of what I do here in this situation. So I called Drazen up with me. Told me, you know, basically just watch my right. Or sorry, watch my left. Pop a shot onto the uh, the M48. Or sorry, the, uh, sorry, the 45. Um, the, the offs A, basically. We'll call it the offs A. Shooting the, uh, shooting the Waffle 4 down because I know for a fact that if I allow it to come up here, that's a lot of alpha my allies do not want to have to deal with. I aim around the corner, pop him, pop him again. I'm like, you know, 406, I'm like, I wonder if I can just get rid of this guy. I watch the E50 fire, I see he's trying to make a run for it. There he goes. Alright, so that's, that, that's huge. Right now, that is absolutely huge. Okay, so we have... The IS-8 on the left-hand side, we have an E-50M, a 1390, an OFS a and I believe at some point an E-75 comes up here. Every time you mark a kill, you need to then lock it down in your brain and go, all right, tank down. What did I just kill? I just killed their alpha. So that means, for, that means specifically that they can't really lock you down with alpha anymore. And now you're trading with same tier guns or like guns. And that's huge. Absolutely huge. You can't allow someone to just pump alpha damage into you repeatedly as you try and pop shots or trade shots for 390 and he's hitting you for almost 700. That's not good. Don't do that. So getting rid of their alpha gun was my priority there. Now that he's down, they realize behind them that they don't have someone who can just sit there and pop people for, you know, a good chunk of their life every 10 seconds. And that kind of, you know, that kind of drops morale a little bit. So now their off A has been hit. The E50M has put, he's kind of put himself into a position where, um, where he's going to be holding down the fort from this side, opposite of me, and keeping me lit for everyone behind him. 1390 is in a mid position. Our 54E1 is on the left. Drazen's right behind me, and the Patton is right there. The Patton is the Patton is also stocked. The Leo one, like I said before, this position is good, but you don't want to just sit there. You do want to pop up, take a shot, and you wait until other tanks have actually either turned their attention elsewhere to get a shot or, you know, any any of those things. You don't want to sit there and just trade because he threw all his hit points away in the very first engagement, and that's not good. Um, we're not even two minutes in just yet, and he's already basically dead. Remember that. That's not very good. 
All right, so now you see here, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going through my whole thing now. Like, after I've killed that tank, I'm looking back saying, like, all right, what's all here? What do I have to be worried about? What do I see down below? What else could possibly come up this hill? I'm going to find that out in just a second. All right, if at the end pops me, so because he popped me, he has to receive two. This is huge. Once I saw that our... Yeah, it, it, it is a patent. I thought so. Uh, once the patent shot the E50M and did damage to him, and he did damage to me, he has to receive damage. Do not allow someone to ever just come up to you and fire on you, especially if they do damage to you and they try and back out of it. Don't let someone just get free damage on you. Free damage, free damage, free damage, free damage, free damage. Because that's annoying. That's annoying, and it's also very bad play. You don't want to put yourself in a position where you allow yourself to be outgunned by someone in a peekaboo position. Because, first off, what we're doing here isn't the best medium tank play, but we have to fill this role because we don't have any heavy tanks. So, you have to play it smartly. And because we put two rounds in this E50M, he's going to think twice about doing that exactly again. Bounce a shot from the uh, from the off A. See so now he's getting shot again. Now he's half dead. The Leo wants him in a good position there because it's really good that he's he's right there. Took another shot. But see, I'm it's it's the, the the one the one thing I do like about being in this position. There's always that one guy. There's always that one guy who is able to actually sit here and. Take the shots or take the you know, the, bounce, the first shot for everyone to then behind you start taking shots on everyone else. And you need to get that first guy to fire for the rest of your allies to actually come around that corner and shoot. Because sometimes no one wants to be that guy. And you know, a lot of times, you know, I, I believe in myself just enough to know that I can survive with a certain amount of hit points late game to carry it if need be. So I don't mind taking this, you know, the, the couple of trade shots to get tanks down. Because in this situation... It's, it's four or five on five, I think. The ISA, is he dead? The ISA just dies. It was a four. It was, it, was, it was going to be before a six on five situation. I knocked the Waffle Four down. They killed the ISA. He's gone. Now it's four on five. But we don't really have a fifth tank because our Leo One is back there. Taking tanks out of the fight is always more important than anything else. So pop the E75. Put some fear into him, make him back up, make him realize that he can't just roll up to this position because I don't want him. I don't want to let him get here. He cannot be here. He's he's too he's too he's too he's too, he's too armory for that. I guess to put that. He has too much armor, so you don't want him to be in that position. Taking the time to try and aim on him to drop a shot on this guy would be way too difficult. Way too difficult. You, you, and you don't want to take a big a big alpha shot for it. Now I see that our M48 has uh sorry our M46 has wrapped around the on the E75. And I'm like, okay, cool, you know, uh at some point he'll turn his attention and that's when I'll shoot him. Because I'm not gonna just, you know, wait for everyone to just shoot me. He turns his attention away from this guy, and I expect him, you know, to actually really go ahead and do it. He's gonna pop up a snapshot into me. So I'm gonna pop him once as I'm going back to try and finish the kill. He's going to get me with a uh, with a snapshot. That's going to make me mad, but whatever, man. Get him. He's almost dead here. I'm at 548. So I still I told Drazen now at this point I'm like, all right, you know, so I've traded out most of my hit points removing most of these tanks and we're in a good position here. I need you to start leading for me, right? So we're waiting a little bit. E at the end is now pushing on our, on our patent trying to get a kill. The 48 is going to knock him down. Uh so T54 he wants to knock him down. Uh, I told Drazen to go around and you know, lead this charge. M48, pop. There goes the M48. Or sorry, the uh, the Ops A. 1390 is going down now. And there he goes. All right, so now we've well, we've completely cleared the hill. With honestly, I think only one casualty. Yeah, we lost the Leo one. That's it. That is how you clear the top of that hill. Is a lot of times you'll have a lot more heavy stuff up there. You're going to have maybe sometimes an E3 or something like that, and you won't be able to work as effectively up there, but this is how you knock stuff down. You have to, you need to do it effectively, you need to trade hit points out effectively, and you need to go after the strongest tank. Now, mind you, mind you here, uh, when Drazen went around that corner, I got the E75, and I reminded him that getting a tank down is more important than hitting a tank for full life, because... Stats don't matter here. Dropping a tank because that tank has high alpha and is going to shoot someone else again, that matters. That's that's huge there. I mean, and Drazen's losing. Drazen is actually learning, so I can't, you know, I can't knock him for that, you know. Um, but no in situations like that where you are fighting on the hill and you have a one-shot tank, shoot it. 
kill it. Get rid of it. Don't let it do any more damage because all it needs is one hit point to kill your whole team. And if you if no one can pin it, if no one can kill it, if no one can get rid of it, it will it, every ten seconds, every twelve seconds, every fourteen seconds. You know, if the big gun just blap, you know, huge holes in in your allies, and you can't let that happen. So, um, we're gonna we're gonna move around here. I uh, I basically call for you know. Okay, so once you once you've won your flank. In all situations, either one your flank, one your area. You know what's going on there. You like I expect my puppies to push forward at this point, and I call them puppies because they're not actually in my platoon. Um, that they're essentially going to actually go forward and they're driving to the cap circle. They're going, they're going, they're, they're going to do what they're going to do. Now, they aren't looking at their mini map, and they don't see that there's an E5 and a gate attacker behind us. So every time you every time you finish your engagement, you stop, look back, and, in, and look at anything else on the map. Check your mini map, see what else is going on, and respond to the biggest threat. And that's something that people need to learn because reading a map isn't very difficult, but sometimes that's what you need to do. So I call Drazen to follow me. You know, that's the good thing about having a wingman. T-54 sees that we're going back for a reason. He goes, oh, man, I'm not going to lead this charge by myself. So he comes with us. You know, I'm like, okay, well, you know, hey, there's a Yig Tiger here. Take a shot on the Yig Tiger. My use is a bad shot. I get a bad shot off because uh, I don't actually pay attention to my gun depression here, and I, uh, I miss a shot. Drazen's going to pop him. Yeah, see, it wasn't paying attention to that. It kind of went to the top of the circle, too. I wasn't really expecting that. But uh, it's a bad shot overall. You gonna know, pull forward again? Popped him. I believe I knock him down. And there he goes. All right, so I call. I call for the E5. I'm like, oh, how much? How, how much HP is the E5? Flip it out here. I'm like, I can't. I know. I don't want to die as the E5. So I call Drazen to go in first. He tracks Drazen. Of course he does. I ram Drazen. Go. You know. You know. I'm like, whatever, man. I've got this. Drazen, you sit here. Wait a minute. I've got this, man. Come around this corner. Run into the wall first. He used to be a bad driver. And pop him because Bay's gone. All right, so that's another tank down. All right, now I, I didn't really do that very skillfully, but you know, you 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 get the whole point there. Speed up a little bit. There's a low. So I let the 5481 engage this guy. He's gonna pop him. I think I finished this guy off as well. Oh no 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 I don't because he actually bounces him a couple times. And then yeah, there we go. Damn. Okay, so we're sitting at 5,643 damage, um, which is nice. Pretty nice, actually. We've got a T-34, KB-4, Leo-1, and a bad shot already. I don't think I get to, uh... I don't think I get to the, any of the tanks from the left-hand side. I do, I do kill the 34, or I shoot him, I think, at least. I mean, this is always the mop-up phase. There's not really too much to learn here other than the fact that, you know, that getting the damage out early, waiting for this guy to shoot, so I can come, come, come around and actually get this guy. Uh, that's what you're waiting for. You know, that's that's pretty much it. And someone else gets him. And there's the bat already up there. And that pretty much summarizes this replay. Um, oh, there's, there's one little, there's one little more tidbit. I'm a tidbit here. That's coming. I won't ruin it. Do, 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 do. Oh, what's going on, surprise? <laughs> All right, so that's basically it, guys. Um, I wanted to, uh, I want to say thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, if you like it, it'll be on YouTube. I'm gonna make a forum post about this one right now, and uh, hopefully you like this. And uh, if you like, if you like this style of video, uh, you know, basically uh, a video about said tank, and then a replay of said tank. And it won't, you don't get, don't, don't get me wrong, it won't always be good replays because sometimes a loss is uh, is necessary to show exactly how you play a tank. And it sounds kind of contradictory, but you know, I'll, I'll explain it to you a little later. Um, so thank you guys for watching, thank you guys for hanging out with me, thank you guys for learning about the M48, and watching a, a, a decent replay from me, uh, not stellar, I could have played much better, made a few mistakes that I, you know, I shouldn't have made, but, you know, you can see exactly what you do in the M48, and you can see, you can see the examples of, uh, playing an M48 in a platoon, and you can see exactly why sometimes people say it's a bad tank, but honestly, I still think it's a very good tank. It's not chosen very much in Clan Wars, because there's obviously better things that, there's, there's better tanks that do a better job of what it does um, in a smaller package or just a, with more mobility or, you know, basically the Leo 1, the AMH 30, do a better job of the M48, uh, the STB. All those tanks do a better job of the M48 because it's not as big and they still have camo. Um, but at any rate, ask me here, though, there. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys like this video, please like it uh, on YouTube for me. Let me know you enjoy it. Leave a comment. 
uh, and please post in the thread so I know uh, whether or not what, what tank you guys want to see next. So I can do something else. I don't want to do another tier 10 tank. I want to do a mid-tier tank. So give me like a tier 6 or a tier 7 or a tier 8 to do. I'd like to do something like that. And then we'll drop it down even lower and we'll play some of those tanks. Because once you get to tier 4, those are kind of just grind tanks. You get through them so fast, there's no specific way to actually play them. Um, but I'd like to, you know, show you guys some something else other than just tier 10. I know you guys don't really play tier 10, and I'd like to actually get into other stuff. So thank you very much for watching, uh, and I will see you guys on the battlefield, I guess. I Maybe mean, call it the battlefield. I'm not really sure if you call it the battlefield. I'll see you, see you guys in game. Yeah, I'll see you guys in game. <laughs> see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.